Hey guys, it's Adam here and we have another fun project. This one's going to be the biggest one yet. I just finished drawing these up in Illustrator. We're going to make a uh, full-size Enderman. And, it, well, it's going to be full-size if you're a kid. I think an adult full-size, like for me, it ended up being like 13 feet tall, just a guess. And I couldn't fit that in my basement. So this is going to be a bit smaller, but it will seem life-size if you're a kid. Um, which will be fun for Halloween. I think we'll set this up. So one thing I noticed, I was looking at the game and I drew all this up. Um, the legs are shorter than the arms. And another weird thing was this jaw fits inside the skull, but it's a bit smaller. It's, it's not how I thought it would be constructed. It's kind of strange. Uh, here's, I did a mock-up in paper. So the, the squares that make up the jaw are a smaller width than the squares on the skull. So uh, I'll have to figure out how that part's gonna be constructed. But what I usually do is at least get started on the parts that I know. And then when there's a problem, I'll slowly figure that out later, okay? Um, so this will be fun. We gotta get some wood. All this will fit on a four by eight sheet of plywood. And uh, I wanna make it as light as possible, but if I use wood that's too thin, it can be um, breakable and kind of flimsy. So I'll have to find out uh, what the right balance is between weight and um, you know that kind of thing because these uh, legs are so long and where they attach is so skinny that there's not I mean there's so much leverage on this uh, it's hard to anticipate beforehand the physics of construction but I think I got a good enough idea we can just go ahead with it so I'm gonna run down get some wood and uh, we'll get this started I had Home Depot cut it in half for me it makes it easier in the car and also easier to push around on the table saw. I'm not moving a whole sheet. This is half inch thick, a bit uh, thicker than I initially wanted. It's gonna make the project heavier, but it's okay. Um, let's see, there's the barcode. Got this, let's see, made in Ecuador. And on this plywood, I'm gonna run, on this half, I'm gonna run all the arms and legs, except one, one of the faces. I'm gonna follow the grain. Also, you'll notice there's a good side and bad side. See the filled in knot hole there? And on this side, there's nothing. So this side's going to be everything exposed. And these parts will be the inside. Um, so all the pieces will be cut out of this wood except for the faces of the head. So the front, back, and sides of the head. And that's because it needs to fit into the lower jaw. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is take one and a half of the plywood right now, cut it into three inch strips here. I have the saw blade set just at the right depth, so we're ready to go. I'm going to turn on the shop vac, and that's it. Let's have uh, some fun building this. Hopefully it turns out good. It's all You never know in the beginning what it's going to be like at the end, but I'm usually pleased.
Well, I finished cutting out most of the pieces here. There's the arms and the legs. The legs are actually smaller than the arms. There's the head and the torso pieces there, most of them. And now I have to cut a 45 degree angle so that I can join these pieces. And I cut a little uh, test piece here and you can see it just matches up like that. So that way you don't have any of this plywood end grain you gotta take care of. If you don't have these kind of tools that I'm going to use and you want to, you know, join it just like that, you're going to have to take care of the exposed wood edge. That's all. I'm going to use my router for this. I have a 45 degree bit and that way I can run all the pieces I need to without adjusting anything. The other way to do it would be to sit, tilt your blade at 45 degrees, but you'll need to move your fence around a lot. So that's why I'm opting for this method. All right, now it's time to nail. We have most of the pieces cut out. There's some we can't do yet. Here's four pieces of one leg. We're gonna put these together and hold it together with a rubber band and glue while I'm using these little nails here. I think these are three quarters of an inch, something like that. And for the smaller, more delicate parts, I'm gonna use these pin nails. See these tiny little things? These don't have a head on them. They're just like little bits of wire, basically. Okay, so we've got this hooked up to an air compressor, and let's get going.
All right, now I'm gonna cut a slot. This piece is the side of the torso, and here's the bottom. So there's gonna be a little notch in here for this piece to come up in so that I can remove it later. So here's the back of the torso, there's the side, and so this is the bottom. And this notch allows me to screw in a piece of wood there and also remove it so I can get to the inside for uh, whatever parts and screws, things like that. So I'm just gonna nail this and glue this just like the other parts. Well, here it is now, and I'm gonna explain the next three cuts. Turns out, this is the actual shape of the head, but it sets one block lower into the torso, because in Minecraft they don't care about physics, but in real life you have to. So this head, let's see if I can grab it, should be this high. And this part just kind of sinks into the torso. So what I'm going to do, first thing, is cut that bottom set off so it's the right height. Next thing we're going to do is, this torso is flipped around, so I'm going to run this on the table saw now that I know the exact dimensions of this uh, inset there. So cut this a little shorter so it fits in. And the third thing is, on these arms, they're going to mount here and I'm going to throw a bolt through it and to make sure that it's got enough material to uh, hang securely I'm going to put in a piece of wood in the middle there. So let's do those three things. All right, now to attach the arms, I'm gonna use these leg bolts. You can see on one end it has machine screws. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna put this in here, and it's gonna be held securely because remember, we reinforced all this. It's solid wood at this part, not the whole thing. And then on this side, right here, you can see there's no threads. That's gonna ride inside here, so it's not gonna grind the wood up. And on this side here, it's just machine uh, threads, so I can put a bolt on or a nut, I always do that. And I'm gonna use these gum nuts, that's what these are called. You can see it's got rubber at the end. And that rubber just helps to grip it so this doesn't come loose over time. You can always just use regular lag bolts if you want. Um, I have to set this arm down a little lower because if the arm is forward, let's say the arm's right, there's the head. 
let's say the arm is right up there. If I tilt the arm, see it's going to come up into the head and then the head's going to be locked. So I'm going to move it down like that so the head can, the arms can move and the head can still move. All right, and I'm just going to throw some bolts straight down um, into the legs. The legs aren't going to move at all. So this is really a kind of a top heavy uh, guy. So we're going to also have to make a base because this will not stand by itself. If anybody touches it, it'll just fall right over. All right, now I'm drilling into the top of the leg for these bolts to be able to go in, into, and you can see these holes that I notched out. And that's just in case I want to run some cables or wires or whatever in the future, then it's going to be easier. Um, because, you know, I'm making this up as I go along, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to want to be able to do that, so I just did it anyway, because it's going to be easier now. Okay, so let's test it out, see how it fits now. That'll be good. There's not enough wood to put in screws here, so I'm going to add some, glue some wood here, drill some holes and throw in some screws, and that will be how this attaches. But so far, so good. I stuck a flashlight in there so you can see what's going on. Um, this is a really high bolt, so I'm going to add some washers. That way I don't have to spend too much time tightening it. I really got to get a wide angle lens, it makes it uh, a lot easier filming. Especially something big like this. Hey, that's cool. Look at that. Let's see how far we can go out before it tips over. There it goes. Maybe more. Yeah. Still, that's pretty neat. Happy with that. Now right, let's do the other one. All right, now it's time for the jaw. Now here's the base. This part's gonna go in like that, okay? And then you have these parts. You can see I just drew these up. There's the right side of the jaw, left side of the jaw. And once they're cut out of wood, it's gonna be nailed on there, like that. And it slips in underneath. And then when he gets all excited and yelling at you, then his head raises, and then you see the rest of the uh, you know teeth or whatever that stuff is. So I have this page is the left and right sides of the front. The sides of the jaw, let's see, are right here. Like, where's the center line? Like that. So I added an extra square because I didn't want it exposed, you know, as two pieces when he lifts his head up. So I'm just in case I'm giving myself some extra room there. Um, so that's the sides. And uh, then the back, it's just a mirror image. So I'll get all these cut out and hopefully this fits in well and doesn't rub against the edges. Thank you. 
Right, normally in these videos I like to tell you a bit about the tools I'm using and I don't think we talked about table saws yet so I'll just take a just a minute to tell you about how table saws work. This one's a multi-function table saw where you can add maybe like a router there and use this you know as a router table things like that and I really only use it as a table saw. You can get table saws uh, pretty small so the first one I had was just a little um, I think it was maybe 13 inches square for the table and uh, uses a, a small blade but it's really handy it wasn't that accurate but it was really good to have and it was I don't know I bought it used for 25 bucks or so so you know there are options what I would prefer um, like the best would be just a dedicated table saw with a really solid top um, but you got to have the room and they're super heavy too so basic functions you have a fence here if I lift the handle up, I can slide the fence back and forth. I never use this. I always either line up the saw like this. See, I'll, I'll look straight down and line up the edge of the blade with the line I want to cut. And then back the fence up to that edge. Or sometimes I measure it. But my <clears throat> usually I don't measure. I just do it like this. Line it up like that. And, and then the fence will meet it. And then you lock the fence into place. When you're pushing the wood through, you just make sure that you don't do this. Watch the edge here. Don't turn it like that, okay? Because what's going to happen is two things. One, you're going to get a bad cut. And two, you can grab the blade. If you are pushing wood through and it grabs, it's the blade spinning towards you. All these little teeth are coming right at you. And it'll grab the wood and throw it at you. All right, so you want to... Um, make sure that when you're pushing it through, it just rides the fence nice and flat. Keep your fingers totally away from this. Um, I have a guard. I never use it, ever. Um, and this is a, uh, this part here is an anti-kickback. So once the wood goes through like this, gravity just makes these pieces fall onto the wood so that if the wood wants to throw back these teeth bite into it and this plastic part is just to make sure that your fingers don't touch the blade but I don't use it um, that's just me I'm not recommending don't not to use it but I don't um, <clears throat> then you have a push stick you can make these out of wood all it is you can cut out a little handle just like this and it has that little notch right there and that notch goes on your wood you can push your wood through and that way your fingers are very far away and that's especially handy when the work is really close to the blade so I use this sometimes in combination I'll maybe hold this in my right hand the wood over here all right and also so that's for that kind of cut now let's say you need to cut a piece of wood like this well you don't want to do it like that you can and sometimes I do but that's not the right way to do it with one this big see it's very easy to make it wobble and if you get this in here and it pinches against the blade again it's gonna fling it and throw it and you're not gonna get a good cut so they have a little miter fence here so this one, I mean, I doubt your saw is going to be like this, anybody who's buying a saw. This is just what Ryobi did on this model, but here's how this one works. Let me flick that up. This goes down there, lock into place. So this whole, what's neat about this one though, really, this whole thing moves. And so it's not sliding on the table. So what you do is you put your wood on this fence. And then you'd have to move it like that, lock it in place. And then you'd cut it like that. And you don't have to worry about it getting squirrely on you. What else? Um, okay, so your wood should be a bit higher than whatever you're trying to cut. Not really much more than that. And if you're doing a very deep cut, do it in several cuts. So if I was going to cut... 
you know, an inch or two deep, I would have the blade that high, make a cut, then raise it and make a cut. You don't want to remove, remove too much material at once. Okay. So if I spin this, it raises and lowers the blade. And uh, so it's good to lower the blade when you're done using your table saw. Just don't leave it up like that. That way if anybody comes in and turns it on, it's not going to hurt anybody. So when you're done using it, lower it below the table. Uh, this is a lock so I can remove that there and then I can spin it. Right now it's at zero degrees, meaning it's just perpendicular to the table. If I spin it, I can get the blade to tilt. See that? And I can lock it in place. I don't ever trust, if I'm going for exact, I don't ever trust these measurements. I'll hold, you know, rulers and stuff up to this, angles, and, and do the angles right. Make sure that they're right. Um, I can't think of too much else. Stuff like this, safety switches, you know, you have to lift it up and push it to turn it on. But to turn it off, you can just hit that fast so that you, it's easy to turn it off. I don't know. I, I guess that's about it. If you have any questions about how these things work, let me know. But anyway, let's get back to building. So right now I need to actually use this and uh, square some of this stuff up. Oh, one other thing. You can get what's called a dado blade. And this is a bunch of blades. You can see one, two, and then these oval shaped ones. There's several of them. So what you do with these is there's this little disc that goes in between them and you stack them. So these two big blades are on the outsides and these oval shaped ones are on the insides and these are staggered. So you can have a table saw blade that's like super wide and can cut a nice big slot into wood. And that's helpful if you're doing things like um, drawers or shelves. Um, if you aren't going to use that, you know, I bought this and I think it was like 80 bucks and I've never used it. I've had it well over a decade. Otherwise, if you don't want to buy a dado, you can, um, pass the wood through. It'll make, you know, a, a cut in the wood only as big as the blade. Then you slide it over, slide it over. And that's just called nibbling. So you can nibble a slot in. It's not as nice. So these are only good, I mean, nobody wants to take the time though. If you only need one cut like that, nobody's going to remove the blade and put this on. It's just a pain. But if you have a big project where you're making a lot of those kind of cuts, then uh, these are handy. I've never needed it. I should probably sell this. It's not, uh, it's just taking up space. And if I haven't used it by now, I don't think I'm ever going to use it. So, all right, let's get going. Now we just let this dry a little bit and we can figure out how this will attach. Uh, this part doesn't move. It can swivel, but it's not going to move up and down. So there's got to be, I've tried thinking of a few ways this will work and uh, I can't think of any other way than to have a rod come up and move the head up. Uh, I don't want a rod showing, but I really can't think of another way. 
So this should go inside. Hopefully it works well. Yeah, it's smaller than the top. So when he screams, he'll be like that, yelling at you. Oh, that's a problem. Hmm. Yeah, it'll have to be like that because the teeth are going to cover the eyes otherwise. So, yeah, we'll have it like that. Hmm, I'll have to figure that out. That's a problem. Let me figure that out. I just went and double checked. So here's what's going on. The jaw on the game is just a little bit smaller, which would make these squares smaller, but not by that much. But it is up a bit like that, and they do cover the eyes behind. Now, because it's a video game, that doesn't matter. But in real life, this matters because the light won't go through as well. So I'm just going to go with it like this, and we will add... Um, the plastic here, the plexiglass, and add some light and see how much of a shadow it makes and make some adjustments later. But I can't anticipate um, what it's going to be like now. We'll have to just go for it. And if we need to make a change later, we'll, we'll do that. But uh, for now, this is how it's going to be. I will drill some holes in it. We'll try to get this head to swivel and, um, and see how we can make this lift. And this top part's kind of heavy. Um, so I don't know how this is going to work still. Alright, I've been thinking about this for a while and here's what I figured out. I'm going to use, uh, this is 3 quarter inch PVC for sprinkler lines. And this is going to control the swivel of the lower jaw. That's it. Just spins. Okay, so I'm going to attach this to the lower jaw. Then inside here is going to fit this conduit. And this is a... Um, a metal pipe that you usually run Romex cable in or something like that. So that's going to go inside here and then this can go up and down. Now the problem is I can't have the jaw swivel this way and the head swivel the other way. It's got to stay locked. So what I'm going to do is cut a slot in here um, six and a half inches long and then through there I'm going to put a screw so that this can't spin. So if the head turns and the jaw, you know, it's kind of complicated. This is getting into uh, puppeteering, really. Uh, so I've been practicing hole sizes on this scrap, and I got the right diameter. Uh, unfortunately, the drill bit is not one that will fit in a power drill. Let me show you what I got here. If you've never seen this kind of drill, old timey. Got this from my grandpa. Okay, you see the end of this bit? It's square. And that fits... I don't know, it's probably too dark. Let's spin that so you can see what it looks like. Inside, there we go. See those jaws? They're going to bite onto the square. Okay, so it's kind of weird. You can cut this off and put it in a drill. You know, because it's still just a round shaft. So if you use a hacksaw, you can cut those off. Um, what's good about, oh, hold on a second, which way are we going, there we go, okay so this drill works like this, it's just a hand drill, you go around and it can go both ways or you can click this and it can go, you know, it's just like a crescent wrench, you know, you can have it go one way, the other or both ways, okay, locked. Now this drill bit is an adjustable one. See the threaded screw here? What this does, focus. All right. It screws into the wood to pull it in. Then you have the tooth right here that bites it and chisels it out. You see these uh, markings here? If I undo this screw, I can slide this bit so I can have any size hole I want. This is a really handy bit. And I have one that would fit in the drill, but I can't find it. So that's why I'm not cutting this off with a hacksaw. Who made this anyway? Irwin? Made in USA. Okay, so this is done. Now let's do this on the jaw. I already have it marked. So I'm going to put the screw right there. And 
See how it works. What's nice about this is you can totally go at your own speed. So now the first cut is just going to gouge it and scrape it. I'm going to go about halfway through. Then that's about good enough. Now because there's nothing for it to bite into anymore, it doesn't pull itself all the way through. You know, it, it's got nowhere for the threads to uh, grab into. So I'll take it out. And then we'll come in from the other side. And that way it will, make sure I'm not drilling anything. That way it will um, chisel a nice clean hole on this side as well. It's going to cut first. Let's reverse it, clear some of that stuff. Okay, let's see if that fits. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. It's not wobbling around. Okay, so the same thing needs to happen on the top of the uh, torso. All right, my battery's gonna run out on the camera, so I'll make this quick. I have a very thin little bit here on the router table. I'm gonna cut a slot into this, about six and a half inches long. I'm gonna mess around with this, and we'll see if this works. Well, I forgot to film this part. I epoxied this in and uh, I used just a little bit of a coupling as a stop and that helped hold it in place while the glue was drying as well. I cut a slot on both sides and uh, there'll be a piece of metal going through that to keep it from turning. You'll see that in a bit. So this goes in there and that's going to go like that. But because there's a lot of friction I'm going to cut a hole in a disc and it'll slide on the plastic and this is good because it's so big that the head won't wobble. So I'm going to use a hole saw and uh, in reverse and we'll do this. DVD goes on. This goes there and it glides really well and there's such a small gap in between. That's great. Alright, we're going to add this conduit piece in and I blew it and cut it too short so I had to put a coupler on. Um, I can just go out and buy another piece but I don't want to leave to do that right now and this is something I can replace later. So you can see I got that little hole right there. I'm going to slip a coat hanger wire through it. Get some more room here. Okay. This that hole. This is going to be tricky because I can't see in there. Let's see. Where would it be? I'm going to have to put the camera down. There we go. Okay, so here's how, here's how this works. See, it can't spin. The head can't spin. It's kind of locked in, but it can go up and down. But this whole shaft can spin. Right now it's laying down so it's kind of stuck. But if I were to stand this um, head up, I can spin the PVC. But I can't spin the metal independently. You can see how good this spins with the DVD. It's really smooth. So that worked out great. Now I cut a piece of pipe because I blew it and cut this too short. So 
So we'll tighten it. And it's a little bit too high. But that'll work. Okay, we got the patient here. It kind of feels like you got a corpse on your workbench. Uh, but I'm going to use some wood filler. This is, I bet, more like Bondo. I've never used this exact stuff. It's got hardener in it, so I bet it smells the same. And there's just some spots here and here. I'm going to paint it, fill in the, the gaps. I'm going to work on making the head lift up later because if uh, I run out of time, I, I definitely want this by Halloween. So I'll do the important stuff first. And if I don't get to the head raising up, then so be it. Um, but uh, right now it's just filling the holes sand it and get it painted and then I'll have to make a stand so this can uh, stand up on its own without worry of tipping over. So let's take a look at this stuff here. Yeah, it's just, it's just Bondo. Hmm. Which I already have, so maybe I don't even use this. Because I don't need more containers of chemical around here. I'd like to use up what I have first, so. And boy, this stinks. I really shouldn't do it in the house. My family is gonna get mad, but I'll do it quick and then haul this thing out of here. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna use the same Bondo that we used on the bomb. It's uh, still left over from that. don't mix up much because it's just a waste if you don't use it in time. And I'll just guess. I have no idea. It's kind of liquidy. Let's put in this is the hardener you have to mix with the Bondo. Okay, a couple drops. The more hardener you use, the quicker it's going to set. All right, well that definitely reeks and uh, it's gonna take a lot longer than I thought. So I'll just do a sanding now and I'll, I'll use some regular wood filler on just the nail heads, but the corners I'll probably still have to do some Bondo. Um, so let's just skip ahead. I'm just gonna use regular wood filler, nothing special, and sand it down. He's hoping it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint it. All right, here's what it looks like before sanding. Just got it all in the corners there. And then it, whoops, didn't take too much sanding uh, to get it really flat and smooth. It really was fast. Probably because it's all just straight. It was really easy. And all I'm gonna do is use this. It's a filler, so it's gonna help fill in the texture of the wood. And I'll probably do a very light sanding right after this, and then we paint it black. Hopefully I can do this before it rains on me. And just to try it out, I got this $1 uh, spray paint. You can find this at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not, how it'll go on. Let's find out. Yeah, it seems kind of thin. It's okay, but you can tell it's not as good. 
Let's just do a light coat. Yeah, it's a dollar for a reason. It's not that good. Boy, this is bad spray paint. It really is. I mean, I'd say it's worth it just to see. That way you appreciate the good stuff. Go ahead and spend a dollar on this. Okay, good enough on this one. I'm gonna clean it off. I'm just gonna wipe each edge on my pant leg so that I'm not painting dust and And I'm getting ready to paint this jaw. This is the front. This is going to be just a quick test. And you might think that painting Minecraft blocks is easy, but man, it really isn't. It's uh, the cuddle, the colors are so subtle. Well, the difference is like if you're doing, um, you know, dirt block, the different browns, getting the different browns is not easy. Okay, let's see. I think this goes, yeah, right here. And this is actually really hard. If you go, I gotta find a different place to buy spray paint. If you go to Home Depot Lowe's and you want grays, oh man, you have maybe two options at best. It's either black, white, or gray, and maybe some other kind of gray. But uh, it's usually some weird metallic, and so it won't work. Or some textured gray. So we have black here which is under the blue and then I got this canned automotive paint so it's more expensive but uh, automotive paint seems to be the way to go when you want a, a bigger color choice so it's like some graphite I don't know it's up in the garage we'll go paint this in a second here I'm just doing the face and I'm gonna see the face of the jaw I'm gonna see how this looks All right. This paint, the black paint is still a bit fresh. I didn't cut deep enough here. All right, let's go in the garage. Now this is what I got, um, dupli color. This is, it's supposed to duplicate car color. So this is some GM color there. They give you the, the automotive number, dark spray. Spiral gray met so metal maybe and uh, It's really close to black. It might not be too noticeable, but that's how the Enderman is. It's almost looks black But these cans are small and they're more expensive. I got this from uh, AutoZone But uh, O'Reilly all those places they seem to have this kind of same stuff all right It's reacting, darn it. Okay, lesson learned. You see how it's orange peeling? The old paint wasn't uh, ready. This will still give us an idea of the coloring, but that's not gonna fly for the final product. Look at that, look how cracked that is. So I'll let this dry, we'll see if we like the color. If so, we'll do the rest once it's totally dry. May as well take all this off, it's already done. Okay, here's another test. I'm gonna try satin clear enamel. This is just a clear coat, but a satin finish. And maybe uh, the change from a gloss to a satin will 
make up for it not being a different color gray. Let's see. Hopefully this does an orange peel, but this is the base anyway, so I don't care so much if I abuse it. I don't see why this wouldn't orange peel. It's the same, it's just spray paint again. Yeah, it's doing it. Well, it's been about 48 hours now. I really wanted to let this paint dry because the reason why it was puckering like that was it was in this in-between stage of wet and starting to dry. If you remember, we had that kind of orange peel look, which we do not want. So this was the base of the legs, well, the base of the torso. So it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna worry about fixing that, but I didn't want to mess up uh, the rest of the paint job and have to sand it down and start over. So this is still letting off some um, stink of the paint, but you have to get kind of close. So I'm going to try it again on this jaw part. Remember right here we did the automotive paint, which is fine, but super expensive. And you know, I'm not that happy with it. I think this kind of looks cooler where you have the gloss paint and then you can have the satin that makes it look a little bit lighter gray. So what I'm gonna do is do uh, tape this off and we're gonna paint on some flat clear coat and see what we like better, the flat or the satin. Okay, here's what I'm gonna use. It's a matte clear. Okay, so it should be pretty flat. We're looking for a couple things. We wanna make sure <coughs> that the paint doesn't pucker, and look at that, it really is right there. Can you believe it? How long do you have to wait? Hmm. Not good. This is not ready yet. Unbelievable. Just doing it there, here, and here. Well, this stuff needs even longer to dry, so let's step into making a stand. Here I already assembled a couple pieces of wood. Got them about the right length, and we're gonna attach them. This is just a scrap piece of wood from some furniture kit. I'm gonna cut it up. And so these pieces are going to be bolted to the base. And the reason why they look goofy like that is because I needed a square piece of wood. I didn't really have anything this thick, so well, it only really needs to be square on the end. So that's going to go in there like that, slip down inside. And then this piece on here, it's just going to stop it from rattling around. So we're going to have to set these back. He's not standing right in the middle. He's going to have to stand back a bit because his arms are going to be hanging out and he's going to be holding a cube. So that's going to push the center of gravity way forward because his arms are so long. There's going to be a lot of weight. So he'll sit back on the edge of this wood and the cube will be somewhere around there. All right, next up, we need to add some wood in here so that when the base is on, I have enough uh, room to throw in screws. Right now if I put in screws it would just split this plywood. So I'm just going to glue in some uh, pieces like this and that should be big enough to take on the screws. Now normally I would staple this in just from the other side but I don't want the staples to go through and I can't clamp it now that I painted it. So I'm just going to force in some wood as a brace till the glue dries. Boy, this uh, paint puckering really stinks. It's making this project go a lot longer than it should. I can't finish it. There's a lot of things I can't do because the paint will get messed up. I think I called it orange peel earlier. It's not. It's uh, puckering. Orange peel is when you have too much paint. And it kind of um, well, it's like the name. It sounds, uh, looks like an orange peel. But puckering is when it 
um, has peaks, it, like squishes to squishes up. And this piece of wood will just act like a spring. Oh wait, that's way too long. Let me cut this one down too. No good. Guess it'll still work. Well, the glue dried. These are ready for drilling. So I have the legs and the base attached together. Slip those in that I'll just do about three screws this side three the other and then one on the short sides Okay, it's been a three days now, and I gotta be honest, if this doesn't go on well and it causes puckering, I think I am gonna go a little insane here. Let's hope we get it right. I'm just flattening it, making sure there's no raises in the tape. All right, so I'm gonna do the set and see what we get. I'm gonna try very light, light mist of the paint. Hard to do. So far, so good. That was not a light mist there. That looks all right. I don't see any deformation in the paint. I think we're good. Okay, so let's let this dry and we'll go back and compare this to the flat and see if we like the setting of the flat better. All right, just when I was getting excited and feeling good about it, I put on another coat just before I brought this back in and it started puckering. Isn't that terrible? Look at that. Uh, there too, even worse. Horrible. So the trick is a super light coat. So I'm still gonna risk it because I can't spend forever on this. I gotta get this uh, finished. So unbelievably light coats. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna tape it up and we'll just paint it and hope for the best. It might not be easy to tell because this is so dark, but this came out really neat. It looks really good. So that's the definitely the way to do it. You can do um, the gloss and then the satin, and it looks like two colors of gray. On camera, it doesn't come out as good because the gloss looks almost mirror. But man, that's good. All right, so I got the lower jaw here and that's gonna go on and remember to put these, uh, whatever kind of plastic you use, you want something in there to help it slide. You can use a milk jug, whatever. And this is kind of reminding me of a project my brother and I did, brother-in-law as well, 
um, back in 1995, I think it was when we finished, and uh, we made a video, a fan vid of Mystery Science Theater, and we built the uh, robots and everything, they're puppets, and uh, just, you know, PVC pipe to spin the head around. This is really bringing back some memories. Maybe I'll show that at the end of this video. Um, what I'd like to do, this video will probably end with just the basic build. And then what I'm going to figure out is the lights inside because I want the eyes to light up. I want it to make sounds. I want the head to at least spin, um, you know, and I'm going to put this on the porch. I'm hopefully you can make it follow the trick-or-treaters when they're walking down the street. That'd be at least be kind of fun. And if I can uh, figure out how to make an effective, you know, the head raise and have him yell and scream as he does. Um, but that's way too much to cram in this video. It won't be done for way too long. So this is just going to be the basic build. But I think to keep this part of the pipe centered, I'll add a piece of wood um, where the legs attach. So the pipe slips in over the wood. That way, if I'm pulling fishing line or something, the pipe can move uh, and not move around. If that makes any sense, sometimes this is just way complicated. Um, but where's the pipe? Okay, so this, remember, we drilled a hole in here. And this piece fits in the slot. Now I gotta get uh, just a piece of metal wire and bend it around. All right, here's a quick look at the base again. Just a piece of wood. I'll probably change this later, but it's uh, got some wood screwed on underneath. And if I move these into the right spot, it just slides right on. So nice and clean, really. And then on the top, you can see just the two bolts that hold those together. So we're gonna add the torso now. Actually, it's more than the torso, it's the whole upper body here. It's not that heavy, actually. I thought it'd be heavier. Next up, we get to add some eyes, and I printed out some eyes on photo paper. Played around with the color. Now this looks right now, or correct right now, but when I shine a light through it, I have no idea what it's going to look like. Hopefully it still looks good. I might need to change this, but for now we'll just do it like this. I'm going to cut one of these out. I have overprint, so it's okay if I do it a little sloppy. Well, I don't even really need to cut this off because it's going to just go right in the back like this and going to be held in place with some plastic. Now you, I'm just using an old cutting board. You can use whatever you want. You know what really works good for diffusing light? I'm using this because it'll diffuse the light. Um, old broken LCD TVs have, if, you t if you've never taken one apart, I'd go for it. It's kind of fun. The, if you take off an LCD, you know how you crack a screen on a TV and it's useless. Um, if you open it up, you can take the um, electronic screen part off and behind that is layers and layers of plastic and they're designed to perfectly diffuse light. So you can use some of those layers for this if you'd like. Okay, let's cut this.
right now I'm going to secure this block. I just drilled a hole for that pipe to go through. And uh, I'm going to line this up in the middle as best I can. This isn't an exact science. So I'm just going to do a little dab of hot glue so I can remove this. And when I know where it's supposed to be exactly, then we can glue it permanent. What do you guys think? <laughs> Is that creepy enough? See, I, I, I want this kids be walking down the street and this just kind of turns and, and follows them going down the sidewalk, at least. If I can get away with that, I'd be happy. I don't know, kind of fun. And these arms, if you tighten them really stiff, they stay out, look at that. I thought that'd be way too heavy. I don't know, let me get the camera off. Come on. Yeah, look at that. Well, here it is so far. We're gonna wrap up this video now, but let's just take a minute and talk about what went well and what I might change. You can see some of the wood grain coming through and that doesn't bother me. If you hated that and you didn't want to see any wood grain, you can just do a smear of Bondo while you're mixing it up for the edges anyway. And that would get rid of all of it, but I didn't want to spend that much time. And I'm happy enough with how it came out. Um, I'm surprised at how stable it is. This is really top heavy, but if I shake it, it's pretty sturdy. And I thought being so top heavy, it would at least have a lot of um, stress on this part, but it seems really solid. So that's nice, and it's all you know heavier than I'd like, but that's okay. It doesn't really uh, weigh too much. One thing I am surprised about is that these arms are actually poseable. If I grab this, I mean I can put it totally horizontal, and it doesn't collapse. So that's kind of funny. I really thought that the weight of an arm this extended would um, either cause it to fall forward or down or something but I also put this off center because I knew that it would be front heavy when the arms are out we still have to do some work on the eyes um, not happy with this I shined you know just an iPhone through it and uh, it's just too washed out in the dark so I'll have to um, either print this out darker or just mess around with that a bit more um, I'm gonna put a speaker inside like I said so it can play some sounds and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, it worked out good enough. I think uh, one thing, this is about maybe an eighth of an inch washer in between there. That's too big. I don't want to see that big of a gap. So I'll probably put a thinner washer in there. But all in all, it's good enough. And uh, I'm happy enough with it. So anyway, leave your comments on what you think about this. What might have uh, I done better or different? Or any suggestions? I mean, the insides using this like a puppet is a little difficult because um, you know you're gonna have to do it with strings or motors or you know some sort of servos or something like that and uh, that's gonna take a lot more time than I have in this video but uh, let's wrap this up I'll uh, read some viewer mails we'll end the giveaway from last video probably in the next video we won't do it this time and uh, anyway so I'll go grab the mail all right, really quickly before we go, I thought we'd do some viewer mails. And if you want to send me one, you can send it to happyadamirl at gmail.com. Also, I think if you click channel and about and YouTube, you're going to find my email there. Just put uh, viewer mail in, in the subject line. That way it's easier for me to find. And you can send photos or whatever you want that way. Um, and this first comment is from Lewis Sutter, who has a better way to drill a hole in a bomb. If you remember, in, um, in the bomb video, I just put it on my lap and drilled. I know it's not safe to do that, but the hard part is stabilizing a sphere when you drill it. And uh, he suggests using like a, um, a donut that you would put on a baseball bat, you know, when you, it's a weight for swinging. 
things like that would work. And that's a serious, that's a really good uh, suggestion. But I think we're gonna go back to um, and make another bomb. Um, for some reason, there's been a lot of views on that video. I don't know why, but if you look at the viewers, um, the, the view statistics, it just spikes for some reason. It's been out for a while, but for some reason, um, a lot of people are watching that one. So we're gonna make it again and make it a lot easier this time. So you won't have to use a lathe. Um, anyway, he says, I found it pretty funny using your lap as a bench. Then 10 seconds later, you go all PSA with a safety message. So anyway, true. Um, so yeah, we'll go back to that one. So here's another one. And uh, this one's from Skylar Babcock. And uh, he sent some images here. And he just, it's just a quick one. He wants to know when we're gonna make the scabbards for the Master Sword. And yes, yes, Skylar, we will do that. Um, and he rendered, it looks like he, the, um, the Skyward Sword, he did that one himself. So good job on that. Yeah, we'll make one um, in the future, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, here's a really long email. Let me skim through this really quick. And this one's from Wenger Volder. He's commenting on the Hylian Shield video. And uh, he says, I'm a little late to the party, but this was an incredible build. The result was phenomenal and I enjoyed watching the entire process. I'd like to mention some specifics that I liked and didn't like. So he lists some pros and cons and uh, we'll read just a few of them here. Uh, he likes the finished result and he likes uh, the way that the handles were attached on the back and he thinks it's a better method than the first way I thought of doing it. Um, let's see, the cons. The way you spray paint drives me nuts. And this is a personal thing really, but I've learned to make sweeping passes with spray paint and you sort of point and shoot. Obviously it works for you as you had a great finish, so it really doesn't matter as a con. Um, and then he suggests using acrylics, which I think we'll get into uh, more acrylics. Yeah, I don't pride myself on painting. In fact, I hate painting. I love building, but when it comes to the paint part, it's not as fun for me. It's just, you know, probably because I'm not that good at it, but um, I think we'll take some of your suggestions on the acrylics and uh, we'll try that out for the next ones. But um, yeah, acrylics are kind of nice because they're water-based and it's a lot more forgiving. Um, and he suggests using a clear coat on the acrylics and I'm not sure how that works because isn't clear coat like an oil base and then the acrylics are water. Somebody comment on that and let me know uh, if you need a special clear coat for acrylic paint versus, you know, just spray paint like this. Um, because again, what I would do on this build is I would have um, probably spray painted a matte, or not a matte, a, a satin black first all over and then taped it off and then finished with a gloss um, black spray paint not do the, what did I do? I did gloss, masked, and then spray painted a satin clear coat. I wouldn't do it like that. Because if you spray a satin first, it has, there's more texture to it and it'll have a better bite for the clear gloss to go on. Does that make sense? That's what I would do differently. Um, oh, and by the way, he says, I was pleased to see uh, that the quote, things you would do differently part of the videos were on trivial things. Um, yeah, so what I do differently, I think we already covered what I do differently on this. Um, but anyway, thanks for the comment, that was a nice one. And then quickly, just a few photos here. And this one's from Ian Foster, and you can see he made his sword and shield and they came out really nice, but he also mounted it on a frame. And it looks like, you see these little brass clips down there at the bottom of the sword, it looks like you can take the sword on and off as well, which is really nice, it's not permanently stuck. So. Anyway, I think that's a really good idea. Um, it came out really nice. I think we gotta try something like that because right now I have this sword and shield just kind of kicking around the basement. It gets moved around a lot and pretty soon it's gonna get damaged if I keep doing that. So I think in a future video, we'll make some sort of mounting wall mount um, for the shields and swords. Anyway, but thanks for sending that in, Ian. Um, then the next one is from Benjamin Greenberg and if you check it out, he made his own kendamas. And that's really cool. Thanks for sending these in, Benjamin. He's got uh, a couple versions here. And the second one here looks like it's got a bit of a Halloween theme. So that came out really nice. Thanks, Benjamin, for sending those in. It's really nice to see uh, what you guys are also making. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks everybody for subscribing and all the support. 
um, all the likes, all the views. It's really cool. So anyway, we'll finish this up later. We'll do some more videos in the future. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye.